I love basketball. I've always played on the school team. This year they asked me to help train our youngest team. The girls are only 11. We only had seven girls on the team when I first started training them. Now we have a full team of 12. That's because the girls have told their friends they enjoy training and playing more this year. I enjoy being with the girls and I think I've got a good relationship with them. Last year their coach shouted at them and was always angry. But I'm not like that. I want to know how they feel and try to motivate them. Also last year they never knew when they were going to train. But I've made a timetable so they know what day and what time we have training sessions and matches. Everybody in my class knows I love computers and that I'm a bit of an expert. So every time they have a problem they ask me for help. That's fine. I enjoy it. It's interesting because I usually know exactly what to do. But it's useful for me to teach it to others and to learn to express myself clearly. I want people to understand what I'm telling them. I'm getting better at finding the exact words to help them. I mean, it's true. Some people take a long time to understand different programs or software. I'm quite good at staying calm and explaining myself as many times as necessary until people understand me. People like the fact that I never get impatient. In our school, we have an end of year trip. Last year, we went to Italy. I had an idea to get some money for the trip and the school liked it. We had a raffle, like a mini lottery. We sold tickets for the lottery to parents, relatives, neighbors, anybody we could. I sold lots and lots of tickets and got the most money in the end. It was quite a lot, so I had to keep it safe. Because it was the first time we did it, there were a few problems. It was my idea, so I felt it was my responsibility to help to find solutions. The school liked the idea so much that they're going to do the same again this year. I think I'll help them. I really like working with others. I love basketball. I've always played on the school team. This year they asked me to help train our youngest team. The girls are only 11. We only had seven girls on the team when I first started training them. Now we have a full team of 12. That's because the girls have told their friends they enjoy training and playing more this year. I enjoy being with the girls and I think I've got a good relationship with them. Last year their coach shouted at them and was always angry. But I'm not like that. I want to know how they feel and try to motivate them. Also last year they never knew when they were going to train but I've made a timetable so they know what day and what time we have training sessions and matches. Everybody in my class knows I love computers and that I'm a bit of an expert. So every time they have a problem, they ask me for help. That's fine, I enjoy it. It's interesting because I usually know exactly what to do, but it's useful for me to teach it to others and to learn to express myself clearly. I want people to understand what I'm telling them. I'm getting better at finding the exact words to help them. I mean, it's true. Some people take a long time to understand different programs or software. I'm quite good at staying calm and explaining myself as many times as necessary until people understand me. People like the fact that I never get impatient. In our school, we have an end of year trip. Last year, we went to Italy. I had an idea to get some money for the trip and the school liked it. We had a raffle, like a mini lottery. We sold tickets for the lottery to parents, relatives, neighbours, anybody we could. I sold lots and lots of tickets and got the most money in the end. It was quite a lot, so I had to keep it safe. Because it was the first time we did it, there were a few problems. It was my idea, so I felt it was my responsibility to help to find solutions. The school liked the idea so much that they're going to do the same again this year. I think I'll help them. I really like working with others. Juliet, it is only your name that is my enemy. If you had another name, you would still be the same person. A rose would still smell as sweet if it were called something different. And Romeo would still be as perfect if you were not called Romeo. Give up your name, Romeo. It is not part of you anyway. And take me instead. Romeo. Just call me love and I shall never be Romeo again. This is one of Shakespeare's most famous plays. That's why I decided to read it. Of course, it is a very romantic story. And I like romances, but it also has a very serious message that is important today. Romeo and Juliet love each other, but their families won't let them. 
There are things in society that separate people from loving each other. But in the end, love always wins. The end is very sad though. The cub had many things to learn. The world was full of surprises for him. He was very much alive, very happy and very proud of himself. One day, however, life suddenly changed. The cub ran down the river to drink early one morning. Suddenly, he saw and smelled something strange. Five strange animals were sitting in front of him. The cub had never seen men before, and suddenly he felt very small. I really enjoy reading this book. The sentences were short and direct. It was easy to understand. And the writer introduced characters really clearly, like White Fang. It was interesting to see how White Fang changed throughout the novel. At first, his old masters treated him really badly and were aggressive towards him, so he was aggressive in return. And then, in the end, his new masters treated him with love, so he changed. Do not kill me yet, the monster cried. Listen to what I have to say. What can you say to me, I replied. You have destroyed everything I loved. You are a thing of evil, a wicked creature. You made me, the monster replied. I did not wish to be evil. I wanted to be your friend, but you made me ugly and ran away from me. I asked you to create a friend for me, but you destroyed her. I had no family to love, so I destroyed yours. It is your fault. This is from the end of the book. At first, I didn't want to read this book because I thought it was just a simple horror story, but it's actually more than that. The relationship between the doctor and the monster is really interesting. In fact, the monster isn't really the monster like it says here. In some ways, the doctor is the monster. So it's a book that makes you think, and that's what I like. Juliet. It is only your name that is my enemy. If you had another name, you would still be the same person. A rose would still smell as sweet if it were called something different. And Romeo would still be as perfect if you were not called Romeo. Give up your name, Romeo. It is not part of you anyway. And take me instead. Romeo. Just call me love and I shall never be Romeo again. This is one of Shakespeare's most famous plays. That's why I decided to read it. Of course, it is a very romantic story. And I like romances, but it also has a very serious message that is important today. Romeo and Juliet love each other, but their families won't let them. There are things in society that separate people from loving each other. But in the end, love always wins. The end is very sad though. The cub had many things to learn. The world was full of surprises for him. He was very much alive, very happy and very proud of himself. One day, however, life suddenly changed. The cub ran down the river to drink early one morning. Suddenly, he saw and smelled something strange. Five strange animals were sitting in front of him. The cub had never seen men before, and suddenly he felt very small. I really enjoy reading this book. The sentences were short and direct. It was easy to understand. And the writer introduced characters really clearly, like White Fang. It was interesting to see how White Fang changed throughout the novel. At first, his old masters treated him really badly and were aggressive towards him, so he was aggressive in return. And then, in the end, his new masters treated him with love, so he changed. Do not kill me yet, the monster cried. Listen to what I have to say. What can you say to me, I replied. You have destroyed everything I loved. You are a thing of evil, a wicked creature. You made me, the monster replied. I did not wish to be evil. I wanted to be your friend, but you made me ugly and ran away from me. I asked you to create a friend for me, but you destroyed her. I had no family to love, so I destroyed yours. It is your fault. This is from the end of the book. At first, I didn't want to read this book because I thought it was just a simple horror story, but it's actually more than that. The relationship between the doctor and the monster is really interesting. In fact, the monster isn't really the monster like it says here. In some ways, the doctor is the monster, 
So it's a book that makes you think and that's what I like.